Hello everyone and welcome you all. So today is very exciting day because today we're going to talk about something very interesting which is related to your CSS interview questions. As we know it very well, today in a current scenario, you being as a front-end developer, CSS playing a very very important role. So in interview, what kind of questions are asked and what kind of answers we have to give, let's talk about those. Okay. So let's get started with those questions and answers. Okay, now here we'll talk about basic CSS interview questions. Now name some CSS frameworks. As we know it very well today in CSS environment there are so many frameworks that are available. Okay, like we talk about CSS, these are the basically necessary libraries which offers you some very popular ready-made components which you can utilize into your existing project and without writing much code, you can really create some awesome effects. So some of the very, very popular libraries are like in Foundation, Bootstrap, Gumbi, UKit, Semantic UI and many more which are available here. Okay. Now, what do you understand by the universal selector? See, universal selector, as you know it very well in CSS, normally we talk about specific selectors, like in talk about class selectors, ID selectors. They select a specific set of elements or a specific element. When we talk about universal selectors, universal selector is matches any element types, like instead of selecting elements of a particular type. So you talk about like an asterisk, where the all elements irrespective of what name and what category they have it all will be selected next tell us about rule set see typically rule set is for the identification for selector which can be attached with other selectors so there are normally two rule sets are available when we talk about declaration block and we talk about selector so declaration block contains one or more semicolons separated by declarations set of styles which we say and the selector is means or which particular element this CSS style will be intended for. Next, what are the elements of CSS box model? Okay, so we know it very well the CSS box model is all about offering you the layout which is a part of the design element. So in CSS, we can see these elements are like in images, you talk about text, okay, you talk about padding, which is so called area around the content, you talk about border, talk about margin, okay, so you talk about this CSS box model. Next, difference between CSS3 and CSS2, we know it very well, CSS has changed a lot and CSS3 has brought so many new features. So we talk about the difference so in CSS2, so CSS splits up the different sections of code into the modules. So in CSS3, both CSS and HTML were put into the single file. In CSS3, there were no new way of writing the CSS rules. There are new view rules are available in writing a CSS rules. Normally in CSS3, it is a backward compatibility maintained by the, with the CSS3. But in CSS2, we do not have any backward compatibility maintained by the CSS2 here. Now, how can CSS be integrated into the HTML page? Like, in order to utilize this, we always use the style sheet. We use style tag. Okay, so multiple options are available. When we talk about using the style tag in a head section, else we talk about inline styling with an element itself. Or third, we talk about external style sheet, which you can link it with your current HTML page, which anyways, enforce reusability. Coming back, what is the RGB stream? So RGB stands for red, green and blue. So it represents a color in CSS. So they are basically uh, starting with the color number zero, goes till 256. Next, what is the purpose of developing a CSS? Okay, the main purpose of developing a CSS is to basically offer the visual appearance to give the better look and feel to your code so that your HTML will offer only the skeleton part but when it comes to the beautification, you talk about organization and everything, you talk about the CSS. Okay, 
So CSS offers the styling part of your web page which looks more attractive. So what is the difference between class and ID? See these are the two different types of selectors are available in CSS. Class selectors and ID selectors. So class is the way of using this HTML elements. So they are not unique and have multiple elements. Where the ID is unique and it can be assigned to a single element. So with CSS different documents can be controlled using the single style. So a style can be grouped in a complex situation to offer the consistent look for the multiple HTML pages. So that is what the advantage is you have it. So you can group multiple styles together and that you can reuse over the different pages to offer the consistent styling. Okay. Now we talk about some intermediate CSS interview questions. So here in the intermediate level you will see like the first question is like what define a Z index. See Z index is specify the stack order of the elements that overlap each other. Okay. So its default value is zero and can take both negative and positive values. Okay. The higher the Z index value is stacked above the lower index element. So it normally takes the following value talk about like an auto number initial and inherit. Next you talk about what are the benefits of CSS sprite. See the main benefit of CSS sprite is like loading a multiple image is not an issue. Okay. Uh, blinking is not seen. There are some advantages are available like when you talk about like uh, one single or small small images it really takes a lot of time to download it individually. So CSS sprites loading multiple image is not an issue. Blinking is not seen because normally what happens blinking happens when the image is getting loaded. So advanced downloading of asset doesn't make a place of until needed. That's the benefit of having the CSS sprites. Next, how can you target the HC and H2 with the same styling? So you can do the comma separated. So you can see multiple elements can be targeted with using comma separated. So you use comma separated values to give the consistent style to both the elements. So name and media types allowed by CSS. So media types are basically a part of your responsiveness. Different media types are allowed like in speech, audio, visual, tactile media, continuous or paged media, grip media or bitmap or interactive media. These are all type of medias are allowed in CSS. So how can you use CSS to control image repetition? So we talk about no repeat. So background repeat property which is available. So you can see background repeat none so that it would not be repeated again and again within your background. Okay, so we are talking about the next questions like about the image scrolling control, how you can control the image scrolling so that you want the image to be remain fixed and rest of the part gets scrolled. So here it is a part of your background attachment property. So here you say the background repeat, no repeat and you see background attachment fixed. So that when you scroll down your image is not going to be scrolled. So that is the benefit of this image control scrolling. Now, Name some font related CSS attributes. So we have some options available like you talk about font style, weight, variant, size, family. These are the font related CSS attributes. Define contextual selector. So normally in CSS the context contextual selectors allows developer to specify style of a different part of the document. Okay, so style which you utilize it can be aligned directly to the static HTML pages to create independent classes. Okay, that's called contextual selector. So responsive web design. Responsive web design is a web design which you want to remain consistent across multiple device screens or the different type of screen sizes and you want to offer the better layout which doesn't looks bloated over the different websites. So that's the benefit which you see when you talk about like responsive web design. 
ceases nomenclature ceases nomenclature means the styling commands are written in a value on a property fashion okay so normally css includes a system terminator semicolon the entire style is wrapped in a curly braces and attached to the dedicated selector okay so this actually creates a style sheet that can be applied to an html page so this is the standard nomenclature okay now coming back to the next point advanced css interviews i will tell you about few questions which are normally asked as a part of advanced css okay now when do you use translate instead of absolute positioning okay so the translate in a css okay transform value on changing you can talk about opacity or transform okay so the browser reflow or repaint is not triggered when you talk about this translate okay so the transform requires a browser to create a gpu layer for elements okay but using the cpu changes absolute positioning property so translate is more efficient and result in shorter paint times next name different ways to position same aspects in css okay so you talk about positioning properties okay so the five different positions values are number 1 you talk about fixed you talk about static you have absolute you have got relative and you have got sticky so five different positioning elements are available in css what are mixins mixins is a similar to the function block of code returning a single value it is a kind of function which we say okay so traditionally it is used in a sas or okay which is typically called statically awesome style sheet so that code that directly compiles into the css styles so how can you optimize the web page for the prints so you actually identify a control okay so called contents areas of a website a general website has a footer header sidebar or nav bar or content area so normally we say conquer the print media without changing the website's integrity by using the page breaks so creating a styles for print size your page for print and avoid unnecessary html tables so using this you can optimize the print of your web pages so what is the meant by css working under the hood so when your browser display a document it actually combine the style okay which presents information and document content so the document is actually processed in two stages number 1 conversion okay or conversion of html and css into the document object model so called dom and dom display contents of browser different between the use of id selector and class selector we have already seen that the, but this is a simple demo of how the id selector and class selectors are used the difference is all about using so here you have a called id which you use dot sorry this hash and there you use dot so tell us about css float property so normally css float properties uh, of positioning an image to the right or left as needed so it typically including text wrapping around it so all properties of elements used before it remain unchanged that is known as called float so what do you understand with the pseudo elements so pseudo elements are special effects to your selectors so normally css finds okay use in applying styles in a html markup so if additional markup or style is not feasible for a document then pseudo elements help by allowing extra markup without interfering with the original document different between logical and physical tag so normally logical tags focus on the content okay and are older as compared to the physical ones logical ones do not find much usage in presentation in terms of utilization at the same time physical ones find application in presentations so how media type works in css type so we have discussed already about a media type so we normally say four different type of media properties are available like in print speech and screens okay 
like you talk about print media screen so we use always at the rate media print you talk about h2 so this changes according to what option you're offering it so guys here we have multiple css question and frequently our css interview questions are offered like tell something about css3 okay so we say css is divided into the modules and is supported by almost every single browser okay it is an advanced version of css2 and offering you lot many other advanced level features which typically in css2 we do not have that okay now we talk about how css selectors used so with the css selectors we can choose you know any element of your html okay so you talk about element attribute you talk about any child selector you can basically select it so what are css image scripts so the group of image placed into the one single image is in a css image script it can reduce the load time because individual images certainly take more time so this takes more time comparatively so we have got explain css specificity so the css specificity is a rank or score that decides style declarations to be used to an element id selectors have high specificity while universal selector has low specificity that's how the specificity is all about so the four css categories that authorize the selectors specificity levels are ids inline element pseudo and class and style attributes so these are a different type of conditions based on that the specificity is considered define gradients in css we know the gradient are again a css3 properties that allows displaying a smooth transformation from one type of color to the another color okay so that's really awesome technique through which you can talk about linear gradient or else you talk about radian gradients but two different type of gradients are used and supported so what are the properties of flexbox so we know it flexbox are basically designed for the alignment purpose so typical the flex boxes are flex direction you talk about wrap flow content align items and the contents like that it is once again the property of alignment so tell us about the usage of css box model so normally box box model is a box binding in html elements that includes padding border margin and the actual content for the more better alignment so normally the box model you get an authority to add a border all around the elements and define space between the elements so what are the position states in css so we normally talk about four positions in css so called relative statics absolute and fixed the default position is state is always static so different between absolute and relative in css so normally relative is useful for some tags in css if we write like 20 pixels then padding shift 20 pixels in a right but when we talk about absolute so it is absolute is relevant relative to the non static parent that means if i'm talking about if we say write 20 pixels the result will be 20 pixels far from the right edge of the parent element that's how the relative and absolute position is so what is the common between class and id see both class are id used in html okay for the css purpose the id is used as an element where the class is used as a block okay so friends thank you these are the quick interview questions and i'm sure that will help you to get some more ideas about how to face those questions in an interview okay thank you and all the best Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.